Well, Lewis, sometimes justice is not swift. It is very slow. And I believe this case is a perfect example of that. This one is out of Anaheim, California. A man is accused of killing his wife on Christmas Day 2011, and finally, 10 years later, he was just sentenced. Can you imagine a case taking this long? I can't imagine, right? It happens way too often. Um, But, you know, bottom line is they eventually got it right. Eventually. Wow. Unbelievable. So last week, 39-year-old William Wallace was sentenced to 15 years to life after being convicted of second-degree murder of his wife, 26-year-old Zizel Preston. Originally, he was charged with first degree. The jury came back with second degree on this one. Um, And part of the sentencing means that because he's been in jail for nine years waiting for the trial, the nine years will be credited toward that 15 to life. Right. right. We'll Correct. we'll see how long he actually ends up serving. So let's talk about the facts of the case because they're they're rather unusual and they are for sure gruesome and disturbing. According to authorities, somewhere between December 24th and 25th of 2011, William Wallace attacked his wife in their apartment in Anaheim. She was hit in the head, according to authorities. Now. There were three children in the apartment at the time. Remember, it's Christmas. So these kids, certainly the older ones, they're waiting anxiously for Santa to arrive because it's Christmas Eve. So that's where their head is at. And, you know, instead of focusing on the joy of Christmas, they lost their parent, their mother on this holiday that will forever mar this holiday without question, and took their innocence away on so many different levels. The children, ages three, eight, and a newborn who was just seven weeks old, Lewis, were forced, this is the unbelievable thing, they were forced to open their presents on Christmas Day in front of their dead mother. Mm. Prosecutors say that William posed his dead wife on the sofa, put sunglasses over her eyes so the children couldn't see death in her eyes. And he then explained to the children, he said, mommy got drunk and ruined Christmas. This is what he tells the kids. Right. Now it gets even more chilling. This is what's so disturbing that during the trial, we have one of those children actually testify about what happened that night. So the daughter who was eight at the time is now 18 years old, and she remembers how her mother was cold to the touch. Right, right. And then and that's, that's partly because they determined that she was killed the night before and in the bedroom. So the next morning when they came out to open gifts and he propped her, um, to to pose her so that he could get some bizarre thrill out of it um, and com- continue with this power control. Uh, the child remembers specifically years later how cold her mom was. And that, that one is really tough to hear. But yeah. Awful. And there were other things that happened um, during the trial that, that were revealed during the trial. So the daughter said that the parents were arguing, that it then became physical, that the father pushed the mother into a glass table. And the daughter then told the court that the father and she, she's only eight, are pulling glass shards from the mother. And she testified, this is what the daughter remembers, that the father picked up the mother to take her to the bathroom to clean her up. And in doing so, he dropped her Mm. And she hid her, she hit her head on the side of the toilet seat, which we know is about the hardest thing in a bathroom, that and the tub, right? Right. So it's unclear whether when she was shoved into the glass table, whether that was enough to kill her. If it wasn't, by the time he dropped her head on the side of the toilet bowl, it was for sure right. the final death blow. Right. Yeah. Um uh, Apparently, that wasn't his first run-in with domestic violence. He had a history. In fact, he was convicted for a previous charge of domestic violence. Not sure if it was with the same wife or not. Uh, He was involved in a a, a divorce in 2008, I believe. I looked that up. Um, And I think that's a different gal. But he has a long 
history with it. In fact, he did so much time, um, but somehow he was able to to uh, hook up with another uh, gal and be exposed to these kids. Thank God they're physically okay, mentally that they're going to have some tough challenges uh, from what they had to participate in their recollection in court and having to go through a court jury trial on top of everything else after losing their mother. It, it, it's it's really it's excellent work by law enforcement to get to that point. The bottom line is that they finally got there. Um, but they're, they're, I, I just have to wonder again, like we always do, how many times law enforcement had responded to that location, any location he was out because of domestic violence situations and how those documented. And, and if the court was aware of all of that, and if it was even documented on when it should have been, or if it was kissed off, uh, I, I just don't know. Uh, but it's interesting because she was going to school. She wanted to become a an advisor, a counselor for domestic violence victims. And she was almost there shortly. Uh, she was killed shortly before graduating. Isn't that amazing? Because yeah. I would think that, mm -hmm. you know, who else would have the knowledge, the empathy, the understanding to say to someone who's frightened on the other side of you to say, I know what it's like. I've been there. Right. You know, th those are sometimes the strongest advocates for those who are suffering, but we see this over and over again on this program. Right. There will be a history of domestic violence and it finally escalates to the point of murder. We see it over and over again. And, and that's like with so many other instances of violence, the violence increases, it gets, you know, more violent. And right. it's certainly within domestic violence, but outside of domestic violence. And, you know, the, the, there was a statement that was read to the jury and it was from Lori Galloway who was a former Anaheim councilwoman but she also was the executive director of the Eli Home for Abused Women and Children and she said that the mother Zazel attempted to escape from William numerous times I've seen this also personally you know volunteering at a domestic violence shelter here in the greater los angeles area where the location has always remained secret because what happens is that the abuser comes looking for the spouse and the children one of the ways they always find them is through school records in this particular place where i volunteered at they have their own internal school so the women who were on the run and hiding their children, they had an accredited school on this facility. So the kids would not have to be enrolled in a public school where their abusive parent could find them. Yeah, it, it's a wonderful program, but it's sad that a program, program like that has to exist. Yeah. Um, you know, you touched on it. Uh, he, he got credit for nine years served. So he could be out at relatively young age, which is scary because what does that mean? The cycle most likely will continue. Um, and somebody unknowingly will, you know, could start a relationship with man, this man and find themselves in the, in the same situation. And how do we prevent that? You know, is it? It is so it, hard, Lewis. It is yeah. one of the most difficult things that the, the intricacy of, um, of family dynamics and relationships and we see it over and over again with women trying to get away from abusive husbands and going back, always going back. They get sweet talked back in. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. This time it's going to be different. And then it's not. And then it's not. So sadly, in this case, she tried to get away several times. She ended up going back. It ended up in the worst possible way. But finally, there has been some justice, whether it is yeah. enough, whether it's appropriate. I don't know. I don't know whatever is appropriate when a human life has been taken, but at least finally, whatever version of justice it's been served. Right. Once again. Once again.